What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about one trade that I made today on the 27th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in and that I actually want to trade over these next couple of trading days, heading into the March month here of 2000. 2019. But before we do get into all of this, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you do enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and smash that like button, guys. Not only does this help support the channel and it helps the channel grow, but it tells me here as a creator on YouTube whether or not I'm doing a good job providing valuable and helpful information to you guys. So, Feel free to do that, and also, if you guys want to join our free Discord group chat and our free Facebook group, those are linked down below in the description box as well. We're talking about trading, investing, stocks, news, strategies, all day in that Discord group chat, and I guarantee you guys, you will find it helpful, so go down below, feel free to join there, write a message in the main chat, and we'll get to talking, guys. So, let's talk about... What is going on right now in the overall market? So there's actually about an hour and 10 minutes left in the market at the time that I am recording this video. So we're going to see some live market action. And as of right now, guys, the SPX is pretty flat, just like it was yesterday. It's down literally 82 cents right now, 81 cents and climbing, you know, down about 0.03%. The Dow Jones right now is down about $55 down about 0.22%. And the NASDAQ here, guys, is actually green, up about $4.50, up about 0.06%. So overall, guys, in terms of the major indices here to judge, you know, the U.S. stock market, there isn't much crazy movement. We saw earlier on today, we actually had a pretty, not big dip, but we saw a decent dip in the overall markets. I believe the Dow was down about 150 points. The SPX was down to about 2775, which at that point down about 15 points. So it was actually down about 0.6% at one point. But since about 1030, what was that? Yeah, about 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Up till now, we've been climbing back up, reversing to the upside for the SPX, for the Dow Jones, and of course, for the NASDAQ as well. So it's honestly looking like, you know, guys, we're holding the uptrend pattern here on these longer term charts that we've been talking about over these past couple of videos and weeks here on the YouTube channel. We've been talking about this uptrend pattern, which is looking a bit uh, butchered here due to this drawing set. Let me just quickly clear that for you guys and get a better, um, you know, visual for you all. You know, we've been talking about this uptrend pattern that I do have illustrated here or which I'm about to illustrate for you guys, you know, on this channel drawing right here. And we noticed that a couple of days ago, we did reach the top at about 28.15. And from there, we've been downtrending, right, for the past two, three trading days heading into today with that big drop. But we noticed that we're hitting the support of this channel as well as the 50 SMA here on this 30-day, 90-minute chart towards the latter half of the day. And we're actually climbing back up. So is this the point in time, guys, where we're actually going to see some movement to the upside in the larger cap stocks like Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, you know, some of these bigger names, you know, value stocks. Is this the time where we're going to start to push back up, you know, because we're seeing some, you know, strong, uh, you know, support here where I just said, right, the 50 SMA and the support line. And this is honestly raising some questions in my head. You know, are we going to start to fill the gap back up to the upside and continue this uptrend and potentially test that 2815 resistance again in the SPX? Well, as of right now, guys, with about an hour and four minutes left in the markets, it's actually looking like we're slowly starting 
to fill the gap back up. And of course, a lot of things can happen here in power hour in this next hour in the stock market. We could honestly end up selling off heavily and breaking this support, you know, overall. But as of now, it does seem like we are heading back up. And of course, there are some major resistances that we were talking about, you know, over these past couple of videos. The first one being at around 2790 here on the SPX. So let me just quickly, you know, change this back to this, uh, what's it called? The uh, trend line drawing. And the second one at about 2815. So right now, guys, we're holding this 2791 as a support and we're slowly starting to fill the gap back up to the 2815 level where we topped off a couple of days ago. So, you know, overall, it is looking like the SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies, this index is slowly starting to push back up and continue the uptrend pattern that we've been on over these past couple of weeks. And honestly, guys, this is going to open up some nice swing opportunities over these next couple of days if we do successfully fill the gap back up to, let's say, 2815, and especially if we break out of that resistance and slowly start to test, you know, 2820, 2825, and 2830, you know, that would put us out of this trend line here, out of this resistance, and that would honestly put us at a breakout pattern spot. So that's a spot right there, guys, that I'm watching very closely for the SPX, and of course, if we see some push later on in the market to the upside, I might be taking some swing positions in some stocks that I'm going to be talking about here in a couple of minutes, so make sure you stay tuned for about 5 to 10 minutes away from now. We're going to be talking about some stocks that I honestly see a lot of potential in for a swing trade. So that's what the SPX is looking like as of right now, guys. The Dow Jones, like we said, down about 0.2% today. And it's honestly looking very similar to the SPX. We got rejected by that resistance at about $26,250 a couple of days ago. We pulled down to the previous resistance at about $25,800, which is now a new support. We're successfully holding it as a new support now. We can clearly see the Dow Jones is in the $26,000 range. And now we're slowly looking like we're filling the gap back to the upside at about $26,200, which again is that resistance now that we need to push back up to in order to test you know, that high, right? Really, we need to push back up here and see, are we going to break out of here for a breakout pattern to the upside to test all-time highs? Or are we going to break to the downside here, break the support level, and slowly start to push to the bottom of this channel? And of course, if we break the bottom of the channel, that's going to be a downwards trending pattern. And that could honestly push the entire Dow Jones or start to push the Dow Jones on a technical basis to the downside, right? So right now, you know, very similar to the SPX, guys. On this one-day, one-minute chart, we saw the big sell-off. Now we're seeing recovery, but we're having some resistance resistance at this 180 SMA here on the 5 to the 5 minutes. So on a smaller term time frame here, the Dow needs to break out of that resistance for it to test that $26,250 resistance. So, you know, everything is looking pretty solid right now in the Dow Jones for the continuation of the uptrend. And of course, if this does push up and breaks the all-time highs here at about $27,000 from a couple of months back, that's going to open up a ton of margin for some of the Dow 30 stocks. And one in particular that I'm currently in, which is Johnson & Johnson. And another one that I'm eyeing up, which is ticker symbol CAT, which is looking pretty good. And we're going to be talking about that here in a couple of minutes as well. So the NASDAQ, guys, like I said, the only one that's green right now, and it's pretty much barely green, literally up not even $2 here on the day. And we can see some triple top action here in terms of the NASDAQ pretty much getting rejected three separate times. Well, not really quite yet the third time, really two separate times here. So that's a double top with a potential triple top here if we do struggle and get rejected again right under this $7,150 resistance. And guys, excuse me, we've been talking about this resistance 
over these past couple of videos and has been having trouble getting above there and we can see it even clearer here on the longer term chart and of course if we do break this resistance from a couple of months back at the beginning of December it's going to be acting as a new support level and from there we're going to slowly start to fill the gap back up to around $7,200 roughly, right? In terms of the NASDAQ, which is the previous resistance from the beginning of November, which is obviously would be a new support if we break above that as well. So keep an eye, you know, on these levels. If we do extend this um, channel out a bit, we can see where we could potentially be bouncing, which is right where we are right now, guys, right? We are right now, at the support of this channel, like I said in yesterday's video, the NASDAQ does seem like it has the most juice in the tank compared to the other two indices, the SPX and the Dow, just because on a technical basis, we're more towards the support of the channel than we were yesterday in terms of the SPX and the Dow. So guys, take a look whether or not we're going to break up here. That's going to be a huge breakout pattern in terms of the NASDAQ. If we do successfully do well in terms of the NASDAQ, there's going to be a bunch of opportunities in some of these tech stocks, which really will do well if the overall NASDAQ does well because the tech stocks are very correlated, you know, with the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ is a very tech heavy index. So let's talk about very quickly what I ended up trading today. And it was a very quick in and out day trade in TVIX. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX is an ETF that goes up in price whenever the SPX is selling off. And it tracks the SPX closely. And simply, guys, like we saw on the chart earlier, the SPX, the Dow, the NASDAQ, they all sold off in the beginning of the day, heading up to about 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which opened up a very nice margin of profit on TVIX. We can see it here. We pushed up from about $31 up to about $33. That was about a 7 or 8% move. Actually, no, about 5, 6% move there in terms of TVIX. And I simply grabbed about 1.2% on this one on a very quick in and out scalp trade. Literally, I waited for this push up above the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA, and for us to slowly start to fill the gap back up to this pre-market resistance at about $31.75. So the fact that we were slowly pushing up here aggressively, the SPX was selling off pretty aggressively this morning, and the futures were looking red all throughout pre-market hours pretty much. You know, this gave me the sign that now is a good time to trade TVIX, which honestly was slowly filling the gap or rather had a pretty nice margin of profit when it fell down to about $31. And the slow gap fill is what I was waiting for to profit on. And that's exactly what I ended up doing here for a quick little 1.2%, right? Up to about the resistance from pre-market hours. That is where I ended up trading TVIX today as a very quick little scalp, uh, you know, day trade right there. So that's pretty much it, guys. Nothing too interesting today in terms of my day trading, but I might take an initial swing position in one of these stocks that I'm about to talk about right now being ticker symbol KO Coca. Cola. And Coca-Cola, the interesting thing about it, guys, is that it's paying its dividend here in about two, three weeks, and its ex-dividend date is on the 13th of March, I believe, or something like that, which is about two weeks away. And what that means, guys, is if you own shares of Coca-Cola before the ex-dividend date, you'll be able to capitalize on the dividends that they do end up paying out to you. And I believe dividend for Coca-Cola right now, I think I checked it about uh, a couple hours ago. I think it's like 3.4% on Yahoo Finance. And of course, that's yearly. So you'll uh, you know divide that by four. So 3.4 divided by four, let's say it's like 0.8%. So just by me, you know, potentially buying into Coca-Cola as a swing trade, I'm going to get 0.8% right off the bat, you know, on the 13th, whatever the ex-dividend date is, not on the ex-dividend date, but on the payment date, if I do hold my shares, you know, 
if I do buy my shares before you know the ex dividend date, I'll be getting those dividends on the payout date, which I have yet to actually look at. But I see potential in Coca Cola, especially since it seems like we are holding above this support right here at about $44.50, where we bottomed out here once, here twice, and here uh, a third time it's looking like, but I still want to see some further confirmation that we're breaking out of this EMA line, which we're slowly starting to see right now, guys. We're seeing a flattening out point right now, but I don't really want to get faked out, which is why if I do take a position later on today, it's going to be a very small portion of my goal position, pretty much I'm going to be scaling into my position with around 20, maybe 15, 20% of my goal position. And if we break up here tomorrow, let's say into the $45 range, I'll add more. And if we break above the 50 SMA, maybe in the 46s, I'll add even more money. And this way, guys, I can build a position up before the X dividend date so I can then claim those dividend Nice, sweet, old dividend profits simply from just holding, you know, Coca-Cola through the X dividend date. So, guys, you know, Coca-Cola, you can see it based on this green, uh, you know, dollar sign. This is when, you know, it's paying its dividend. 40 cents, you can see it right there. It's 3 slash 14 Central Standard Time. That is when... You know, I'd have to hold the shares until pretty much to get their dividend. And that's what I'm planning on doing as of right now in terms of Coca Cola stock. And of course, you know, I'm going to set a stop loss about 1%, 2% below here if I do end up buying in. And I'll let all of you guys know, uh, you know, in the Discord chat if I do end up buying in. So Coca Cola, that's one that I'm very interested in. And honestly, seriously, considering putting some money in later on today and next week, heading on into the March uh, month here of 2019. Another one that I find very, very attractive right now and interesting is Billy, ticker symbol B-I-B. Uh, L I and this is one that I was watching early on this morning for a potential pop. We never got it. And why am I watching this one in the first place, guys? Well, we're holding this old resistance here from the pop up at about 1950 as a new support level, and it's looking very, very similar to this previous pattern that we saw a couple of weeks ago. And we can see it right here. This was a resistance at $18.40. We broke above it held it as a new support here, and then popped up and filled the gap and made a new resistance pretty much, broke out of it, making it a new support, which is what we're holding right now. And now I'm looking to see if it's going to do a similar pattern to this where we fill back up to the $21 resistance. So like I said, I was watching this one this morning for a potential pop up here in the $20 range. I was looking if it was going to pop and fill the gap. Never did. Ended up selling off to about $19.50. That kind of took it off my radar for the day. But the fact that we're holding the support throughout the entire day here is opening up some margin in my eyes for a potential trade in Billy tomorrow. So tomorrow, guys, I'm watching Billy very closely to see if it does end up holding this new support into, into tomorrow and slowly start to curl back up to fill the gap back up to around $21. I find that very, very attractive. Ticker symbol B-I-L-I. -I. So another one, cat. Ticker symbol CAT Caterpillar. This is one I swing traded last week, I believe. I took my profits on this one the day before, literally the day before the big drop here, the gap down to about 135. And from there, we held a new higher low. We held the uptrend pattern and we held the 50 SMA. And it seems like we're slowly starting to fill the gap back up from this support at 137 back up to around 142. So very simple, guys, with CAT. I'm watching to see if we're going to fill the gap so I can potentially capitalize on this gap fill. And if we pop out of 142, out of that resistance, that's going to be a huge breakout pattern to the upside. And from there, we can run even more with the next resistance. Let me do this really quick for you guys. Probably being around 143.50 or $143. So if we break, you know, the 142, 143 could be the next spot. And of course, 147 from this pop-up area. Uh, what, what, when was this? I believe this was back in, uh, 
you know, January, is that saying? No, August. No, back in July, actually, we were at 147, making that a resistance as well. So keep an eye. If we fill the gap up to here and we break out, 147 is going to be the next spot. We're going to be watching Caterpillar, ticker symbol CAT, to potentially go to. So another one that did very well today, which is one that I stopped out of yesterday, Kind of pissed about this, guys, because, you know, if I did hold it overnight, which would be going against my rules, and I wouldn't have done that anyway, but hypothetically, if I did hold this overnight, UWT, I would have made a nice, nice, literally like 10% on my money, because for those of you guys that don't recall on yesterday's video, I was in at about 1475 in UWT yesterday, and I actually sold off, or I set my uh, stop loss, rather, at literally... 1448 yesterday at 2% below from where I got in. And take a look, guys. It hit exactly 1448. It kissed my stop loss, and then it went right back up right after that. So I know a lot of you guys have experienced this before. That is exactly what ended up happening to me. And of course, you know, this one shot up very quickly today. I think it hit like $16.09 at its high or something like that. And for those of you guys that don't know, this is a crude oil-based ETF. It trades based upon slash CL. Whenever CL is going up, guys, very simple. UWT is going up as well. So right now we're at a very critical spot you know, in crude oil for UWT to continue the uptrend. What we want to see is a break out of about $57 and $57 and 50 cents, you know, for UWT to continue this uptrend that it's been on. But let's say we top off here and slowly start to push back down. That's going to be a bearish pattern because that's going to be a double top pattern. And double top patterns, guys, meaning let's say we topped off here. We topped off the first time at about 57.50. And we topped again. Let's say hypothetically we top again at 57.50. That means we're struggling to break out to make that higher high. We're struggling to break out of that resistance and we're pushing down, which is a very bearish sign that could lead to more selling in crude oil, which is why, you know, this is a very important spot. Are we going to break out or are we going to get rejected and push down and start a bearish pattern, which would really benefit DWT, which is the inverse to UWT. So I'm going to be watching, you know, DWT and UWT tomorrow based on whatever crude oil does that is how i'm going to decide whether i'm trading dwt which again is the bear etf going up in price when crude oil is going down or uwt which again is the bull etf which goes up whenever crude oil is going up as well so watching those very very closely guys uwt as well as dwt and tesla guys holy crap i actually haven't looked at tesla over these next uh over these past couple of hours i did see it was doing well earlier but funny thing guys tesla seems to do very well whenever the markets are selling off for some odd reason right we saw earlier this year back in you know the october days where we sold off heavily in the overall markets tesla did extremely extremely well and this morning guys you know, my whole entire watch list pretty much was red because we saw the markets in general were selling off, but one of the only green stocks was Tesla. So it's, it's kind of funny. I'm sure there's no correlation there, but whenever I feel like the markets are red, people like flock their money to Tesla or something. You know, I'm sure there's no correlation, but I feel like every time I see that, it's just like, wow, Tesla's green, markets are red. What are the odds of that? But guys, we see... A lot of problems with Tesla, the SEC problems, you know, Elon Musk, his antics again on Twitter, but the stock is up $17 right now, up 5%. And I know you guys see this red trend line here. I literally drew this this morning because we were struggling to get above it this morning at about $300. We had someone on YouTube ask me about Tesla stock. I said, if we break out of this, it's going to be a huge, huge breakout pattern into the 300 to 305 level. We, had, we did exactly that. We broke this downward trending pattern. And now we're breaking out into the 315 range. We're testing that 180 SMA resistance. And guys, if we do end up breaking here, and especially the 323 level, which is a little bit ahead of ourselves now, you know, a $30 push in a matter of one day in Tesla stock 
is a bit unrealistic, but let's say we do see that happen, which again, there is a chance, there is a chance, you know, that's going to be a really good, you know, breakout pattern to the upside, especially if we start to knock out those old resistances in terms of the price action right now. So Tesla, guys, I'm interested in potentially trading this one again if we do end up, you know, pushing into the 320 range and slowly start to pull back a bit, you know, hold the old resistance as a new support. But, you know, out of all the stocks, ETFs I've talked about so far, this one's probably the last one on my list that I want to trade because every time that I've traded Tesla over the past month, month and a half, I've lost money. And that was about two, three separate occasions, I believe. I, I lost money once, hit my stop loss. Another time, it hit my stop loss. So I really haven't had much luck, you know, with Tesla stock in terms of trading, but I sure do love watching the price action. And of course, Elon Musk, you know, driving the stock up, driving the stock down. It's a pretty fun, entertaining thing, in my personal opinion, especially since I am, you know, a stock nerd. People out there that don't like stocks are probably like, dude, you're like the weirdest person ever. But you know, that's just how I am, guys. You know, this is kind of uh, entertaining to me, and that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of uh, Tesla stock here. Another one, Walmart, is one I'm watching. This one's kind of breaking the old resistance, not making it a new support, which is kind of unattractive to me right now, but there's still some hope that we do end up popping above here, which is why it's still on my watch list and why I'm still watching it right now. And let's say we do get into the $100 level, guys. That's going to be a nice position, in my opinion, for us to potentially trade it back up to about 104. But until then, I'm honestly going to set an alert right now. I'm not really looking to trade Walmart stock. So is at or above $100? Let's say $100 flat. We'll make that alert and we'll just pay attention to it and see if it does end up showing a reversal push to the upside. So one more I want to quickly talk about is Square, guys. Square is one I've been talking about, and I'm honestly really considering trading this one as well. We're noticing the break above the resistance at about $78, which is what we were talking about in one of the previous videos. I forget which video, but we did an analysis on Square talking about how if it breaks this resistance, holds it as a new support, we'll be able to fill the gap or capitalize slowly on the gap back up to the next resistance, which is at about $81. And that's, guys, what it's looking like it's doing right now. I really want to profit on uh, capitalize on this one tomorrow, so I'm going to be keeping an eye on it, potentially for a pullback and for it to hold that 78, 78, 20 level. That would be an ideal spot in terms of square stock in my personal opinion. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Those are a couple of stocks that I'm seriously considering trading over these next couple of days and a quick little market update on what's been going on up till now. And we can see not much movement since we started watching this video or started uh, recording this video, rather. The SPX still down about 83 cents. Dow still down about $55 uh, dollars here. The NASDAQ still up about $4. So it's looking like we're going to end up closing the day, you know, pretty flat, maybe up about 0.2% down about 0.2% unless something crazily drastic happens here over the next couple of, uh, you know, 40 minutes rather, that is where we're going to end up closing. And let's take a look at what Coca-Cola has been doing over these past couple of minutes. So I can just leave you guys off on that note. And it's looking good still up around 0.4%. We're holding this nice support. So honestly, guys, I'm heavily considering taking a position once I do end off this video. I'm going to let you guys know, of course, um, you know, later on in the group chat when you guys do watch this, I'll let you guys know tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys did very well on your trading today. Of course, let me know down below in the comment section. What did you guys end up trading today? I would love to know. What are you watching for tomorrow? What are you watching for the rest of this week heading off into March of 2019? I would love to know. And if you guys like the video and if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and of course, hit that like button while you're at it. Why not? You support me. You know, you support the content here on YouTube. Just hit that like button, man. Why not? So I hope you guys enjoy the video as always. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in tomorrow's video.